Hello everybody, my name is Lucy Superfox and this is my podcast. Welcome back to The Way That I See It and today I want to talk a little bit about women supporting women. Now I know that this sometimes can get a bit of a, uh, I don't know what the word, get a bit fluffy is perhaps a great way to describe it but for me one of the biggest things that I have learned on my journey in self-employed entrepreneurship is that when you surround yourself with the right people, when you surround yourself with positive, driven, uplifted, motivating human beings, not only do you become more like that, so more motivated, more driven, more focused, more successful, you actually also learn what it's like to be successful, not because you just absorb it by accident, not because you look to the left and think, oh, I'm going to do that, I look to the right and go, oh, I'm going to do that, because what happens is when not only do we surround ourselves with these people, but we actually aim to model these people because that's what we do. The people in our lives become a huge impact on us in terms of the way we speak, the way we think, the way we behave, the way we do anything. That what actually happens is we model their success as well or their failure. And so when we're surrounding ourselves with women, if we're not celebrating their success, if we're not sat there thinking, oh my God, she smashed it. Oh my God, she's killing life. Oh my God, I'm going to comment on that post. Wow, she looks like a babe in that dress. Oh my God, she's earned that trip. Whatever it is, right? If we aren't doing that, what we're basically doing is we're acting like the world owes us something or that there isn't enough to go around. Because when we act from a place of lack, when somebody else has something good, we need to see that as Gavin Bernstein would say, as evidence, right? As universal evidence that it's possible for us. Hello, the dogs are coming so home. As universal evidence that it's possible for us. Hello, babe, hi. Rather than see that as the opposite of that. And what most people do is say, oh my God, she's got a great boyfriend. She must have had the last single man on earth, right? Or, oh my God, she's got a great business. That means there's no business left for me. And as much as I'm a big believer in, you know, finding a niche, having your own vibe, creating your own tribe, doing your own thing in whatever industry you work in, I also believe there's enough to go around. Like we need hairdressers, we need personal trainers, we need business owners, we need coaches, we need podcasters, we need all of these things. And so sometimes what happen happens is we might surround ourselves, we might follow what we believe are inspirational people, but actually if we don't celebrate their wins as if they're our own, we're basically putting people on pedestals, number one. And two, what we're then doing is basically just tormenting ourselves into showing, seeing all the things that we want and telling ourselves we can't have them. Now, what you've got to see, you've got to decide that other people's success is as valuable as your own. You've got to see that when someone else, I don't know, gets a new car, buys new clothes, goes on holiday, then rather than be jealous, and I'm saying that in inverted commas, jealous of their life rather than be negative about the things they've achieved or she's only got that because of this or she's only got in shape because you know she doesn't eat and she only got right and your brain goes wow maybe just be like oh my god i'm so happy for her what evidence i can too and i distinctly remember having a memory and i actually can be quite jealous isn't the right word i can be quite a cynical person so i definitely can catch myself and i definitely this is growing up modeling right here you know just the, the world I grew up in you know in the school I was in and where we lived and the kind of things people said and but you know I can catch myself being really cynical and sometimes you know I've said things like well she only did that because of that and she only got that because of that and it's not because I well actually it's not true sometimes because I've obviously felt inferior in the past like I'm talking last few years ago I definitely would have felt inferior. So I will have said these things out of a fear projection, out of, well, I'm not good enough. Why haven't I done it yet? You know, if it's right for me, then I would be where she is. And actually, one of the biggest lessons that I learned was that when I celebrate other women's success as if it was my own, what then happens is I allow myself to accept that I am worthy of the goal. But the longer that I continue to celebrate other people's success, either in a fake way, like, oh my God, you're killing it, thinking, oh, what a bitch. Or from a place of, oh, that's good for them, but it'll never happen for me. I was keeping myself separate from my goals and dreams. And so for me, celebrating other women's success is that trifold situation. It's number one, seeing it as evidence for you. Number two, actually seeing that when you surround yourself with these type of people, you can model them. And number three, actually just choosing that there is no, there's not, there's no limit to how many people we need to do that thing or have that thing, especially in you know, certain worlds and certain industries, you actually have, you know, multiple people when it shows, right? 
you know, multiple people are personal trainers, multiple people are coaches, multiple people make bikinis, multiple people, you know, can get to the top of a network marketing company, like whatever world you're in. And I think sometimes we look around us so much that everyone's competition and we see all these motivational quotes about, you know, the competition and who's working harder than you. And I'm like, that's cool, but I don't want to live my life racing against other people. I don't want to motivate myself out of bed versus someone else. Like, it's a great concept to get your ass moving sometimes, right? Competition is, can be healthy when it's fun, right? Competition when it's fun, like, you know, parents at kids' school day, like school day, right? What's it called? Sports day. There we go. That's what I'm going for. It. You know, sport, kids' sports day. I mean, that's fun, okay? But when it gets to, like, really stupid shit where you're competing for how fast someone can get engaged, married, you know, you're probably going to be the one that gets divorced. That's the truth. And so I think what we've got to get out of this is competing. And I think it's not even competing sometimes. I honestly just think that people see somebody so separate from themselves that they do put them on a pedestal. And I know I've talked about this before. I know I've talked about this a lot on Instagram, but there are a lot of people that I have met, both celebrity and otherwise, who are incredibly successful and have incredible things. And people put them on such a pedestal and say, I can never be like them. I can never do that. I could never be like you. And you know what? You can never be like me, but you can do the things that I do and have the things that I have. And I think what we mistake sometimes when we don't celebrate someone's success as if it's our own, don't see it as evidence for us all, and we see it as just good for them, what then happens is we put them on that pedestal and we push ourselves further away from the goal. I can tell you some of the celebrities I've met and, you know, famous people and non-famous people who have great success, I can tell you that all of them, there's something about them that's not particularly inspiring. There's something about them that's not particularly motivating. Like there's things about me that people will probably never know. And if I told you, never believe me because you'd be like, no way, Luce, that's not you at all. And it so is. And I think what we have to remember is we only see a portion of the puzzle right? We only see the piece of their life that they allow us to see. And that's amazing and powerful. But for me, I think that's a called boundaries, <laughs> right? So um, privacy. But what we have to remember is that when we celebrate women's success as evidence, when we celebrate other people's success as something that we can also achieve, what we prevent ourselves from doing is feeling those things like jealousy, negativity, envy, separation, which are the feelings that make life not nice, are the feelings that make us feel worthless and unimportant. And if we choose to see everyone as evidence and everyone as proof and everyone as like all connected, what then happens is we allow ourselves to step into our worth and step forward to achieve our own goals. And I know that I can say that from someone who's, a you know, absolutely built my self-confidence from fucking nothing, you know, zero confidence in my early twenties to somebody who absolutely knows themselves. I definitely catch myself sometimes and I get nervous and did a business presentation last night and I was nervous. And, but you know what? I actually built this confidence. I wasn't given it. I didn't earn it. I built it. And I think that's the biggest thing we need to remember is that confidence and feeling good about yourself and self-worth are things that you can learn. And they're actually skills that you can cultivate over time. And so I built my self-worth. I wasn't given it. No one handed it to me. Um, you know, I had great parenting and I've had some great relationships and I've had some great friendships, but at the end of the day, it was still down to me how I chose to view myself. And so no matter how you've lived your life, no matter where your background is, no matter who in your life is, you know, been part of your childhood, you know, I've just been reading um, Bex King's Healing is the New High, you know, it's our responsibility to heal. No matter what has happened to you in the past, it is our responsibility to heal. No matter what happened to you, who did it, when it happened, it is your responsibility to heal. And so what I want you to take away from this week's podcast is really knowing that other people's success is evidence of your own. Celebrating other people's success allows you to see that it's possible for you. And that when you do those things, you can truly step into knowing that you are absolutely worthy of every single life goal and dream that you have for yourself. And if we had a little bit less competition, a little bit more collaboration, a little less comparison and a little more unity, I really believe we'd also be a lot happier. So little rant from me, this, uh, <laughs> my standard weekly rant. That was the way that I see it. And I'll see you on the next podcast.